How's everyone doing? Who would have thought that the subject of hyperphysicality would be so relevant because we're having to socially distance? But I actually feel socially closer to more people. I'm closer to you now because I don't know if, um, if that's your kitchen. You'd have never shown me your kitchen mm -hmm. if we were meeting now in Boston together. Students usually embark on a large-scale building exercise where they build pavilions that are 15 feet or more in dimension. It's been, I think, a little bit difficult because in the middle of this project, everyone had to leave campus, go to their individual homes, and sort of find what they could produce essentially in their kitchens. When we originally set this theme of hyperphysicality, the context was completely different. The world was okay. And I think Thomas and I were looking forward to meeting you all in person and having physical, engaging discussions about hyperphysicality. And then the world changed. The students are looking at physical means of connection that are able to bridge between their various environments. Expanding beyond that initial definition of hyper, whether that's through light, sound, touch, smell, orientation, or movement. We've been interested in how you make places engage people more. Our research in our studio is how do you bring people together? Why would you go somewhere when you don't need to? Unless it really connects with your humanity in some way and engages you. I took hyperphysicality to mean creating some sort of shared experience. We had to find a way to merge the physical and digital world. It was very vague, but it became very interesting because of this whole coronavirus situation. The students jumped in and embraced the sudden shift in the, in the whole project, and yet it was so relevant and it was a treat for us to watch the process happen over a number of weeks. So this is a giant tessellating structure that would act as an acoustic sound drop. An acoustic backdrop is hyperphysical because it creates a more immersive experience. My project was basically trying to create some sort of object that you could take into a video call in order to make that call a more playful environment and to sort of have time with your friends that was not limited to just this box that we're in all the time now. Our group wanted to focus on obsessive rituals, in particular uh, in light of this COVID-19 situation, hand washing, and we saw it as hyperphysical because Soap is one of the only things that we can all physically touch right now and kind of share. So you can see all of these five blocks that we've been using for about three weeks now when we wash our hands. And you can see how over time each person has eroded to emphasize different motions. It's a lovely project. I, I love the materials you've used. I find them still holding back a little bit in, in terms of form. I would push it to its limit till they are the definitive pan-sculptural, the dance. I mean, there's a choreography, isn't there, mm -hmm. that you've really tr tracked, which was lovely. Um, and and uh, how you can, they provoke that, that hand dance. It's really powerful to have people involved in classes that are doing what you want to do when you graduate. See kind of what you're going towards. I really appreciate the amount of efforts and deep thinking that each of you have put into this because I know it's an incredibly abstract brief. Dissecting the word hyper and turn it into these incredibly physical things that yet operate in totally non-physical ways in order to connect you. There wouldn't have been a better time to be thinking about this idea of hyperphysicality than when you're at home trying to share your experience with other people. 
that aren't there with you. So you have to find creative ways to express yourself. And that was what this class was about. I'm glad that all of you were able to sort of take, I think the brief, not just as something to design for, but as a methodology as well that gave you physical interactions that forced you to do physical things. I feel like I got to focus more on building the narrative and communication. In the studio, I might have focused more on the tools, seeing what I could do with the tools rather than what the tools could do for me. The wartime spirit was quite amazing because every student was working at home. There was the immediacy of what do you have around your house? Maybe we had a more meaningful interaction in some strange way by not being together because we were thrown together in the adversity of the situation.